morning. Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to see you. I'm very happy to see very friendly faces this morning. And uh, I am very pleased to um, have the opportunity to facilit facilitate a very important discussion for us at the Global Initiative for Fiscal Transparency. Uh, measuring what we do in order to compare, to contrast, to basically know where we are and where to go is essential. And uh, this was one of the topics that was first when we uh, put together uh, the um, uh, survey uh, to help you uh, stewards uh, build up the agenda with us. It is always a hot topic. And it is a very important topic for the network as a matter of fact. Uh, this is one of the reasons why the network exists. Uh, so welcome. Uh, this uh, uh, session is being translated in Spanish. We are um, uh, recording the session so others can um, listen to it in the future. And I am very pleased to introduce um, uh, the speakers for today. We're going to start with uh, Concepcion uh, Verdugo from the Fiscal Affairs Department of the International Monetary Fund. Uh, bienvenida, buenos dias. Thank you, Concha, for um, accepting, presenting in this session. We're going to then have uh, uh, Caterine Kutsatse and Natia Gulwa uh, from the Ministry of Finance of Georgia. Uh, newly uh, uh, admitted, and we're honored by it, a, a member of the GIFT network. Uh, Georgia has been doing amazing, uh, incredibly, in uh, uh, its improvements in fiscal transparency and other important um, features of openness that we measure. So it would be great to hear about their experience. After that, we're going to talk about the Open Budget Survey, uh, which um, a 2019 edition was released this year. And I am very pleased to have uh, around the table my dear friends, Anjali Garg and uh, David Robbins, uh, IBP colleagues. As you know, GIFT is housed at IBP. And uh, I've been missing them very much this year, now that I only see them like you on the screen. Uh, thank you for being here. And finally, if we're lucky, we uh, are still expecting a representative from the Ministry of Finance uh, of Liberia. Liberia has been doing great in th their efforts to improve openness and to engage in public participation in the fiscal budget, in the budget cycle. Uh, we have their confirmation uh, and we hope um, that the technology will allow them to join us. So uh, without further ado, let me um, ask uh, uh, Concepcion Verdugo from the IMF to start. Um, let me again stress out that one of the reasons why uh, GIFT exists is because of the need to measure fiscal transparency to guide countries in their efforts to improve. But from IBP, World Bank, IMF, OECD standpoint, also to coordinate better the ways in which they're, uh, from different perspectives, measure fiscal transparency you will see that while IBP is more from the civil society, civil society transparency standpoint, IMF goes more into the internal management and risk considerations for measuring transparency. So, Concepcion, the floor is yours. Uh, 
Uh, good morning, uh, dear General Steward members. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be participating in this meeting and thank you, thank you very much to GIFT for the invitation. I will focus my presentation on five uh, key issues. Uh, I want to demonstrate that fiscal transparency is important uh, for sound governance and the prevention of corruption. Let me start, uh, let me start what, what is fiscal transparency and why it matters for governance? On the slide two, please. Uh, fiscal transparency is an important, very important deterrent for corruption. Fiscal transparency provides clear, reliable, relevant, and timely reporting of the state of public finances and also openness to public of the governance fiscal policy making process. And why is important for, for, for preventing corruption? Because it's about the use of public funds first. Second, because it provides legislators, markets and citizens with the, with the information that it's necessary to hold them accountable for their fiscal performance and the use of public resources. And finally, because a lack of fiscal transparency can undermine the accountability and provide opportunities for the misappropriation of public funds. Let's move to slide number three. So how, how the IMF tools help identify governance or corruption vulnerabilities and reform priorities? We have four tools. The first one is the one that it's called the IMF Fiscal Transparency Code. Can we switch to uh, slide number four for just a minute? Uh, very good. This is the code. It's an international recognized standard. It's composed by four pillars assigning key institutional areas that are vulnerable to corruption. The areas are the following. The first one, which is very important to uh, uh, the transparency of the public finances fiscal reporting. It has four angles that we assess. It's coverage, frequency and timeliness of the information, quality and integrity. The second area, which is the fiscal forecasting and budgeting, reviews how comprehensive the budget is, whether the budget is done in the order that it's supposed to be, the orderliness, then the policy orientation, no, where the, 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 the government is, is, is looking forward on their revenues and expenses, and then the credibility of the budget that is put together. On the pillar three, we analyze the risks, the, the, the risks that the country can face, and we do in three angles. First, we analyze potential risks and disclosure. The second is how the country manage those risks, and then the fiscal coordination between subnationals and um, public companies. The fourth is the new one, which is the resource revenue management. Uh, uh, it assess, uh, the code provides information on how to assess resource ownerships and rights, how uh, resources are, the revenue is mobilized, how it's spent, and then how the information is disclosed. Let's go back to, to slide number three, and let's talk about, about the second tool. The second tool is what we call the fiscal transparency evaluations, and are the IMF fiscal transparency diagnostic. Very relevant tool. Why it's relevant? It's relevant because it provides a very, very rigorous analysis of the scale, all, all the gaps and sources of fiscal vulnerability. It also provides a visual account on the strengths and the reforms priorities through a summary heat map. Also, it provides like a target and sequence action plan to help countries address areas of weaknesses. Uh, also, it allows for a modular application focused on just one of the pillars of the code. For example, we did in Trinidad and Tobago, and Tobago only the pillar four. Let's move to the third tool, which is the, the, the 2008 Transparency Handbook. It explains the code with country examples. It's a very good guidance because um, it describes recent trends in implementation of each principle, defines very well the code and the dimension.
Concha, I think we lose we lost your audio for for a little bit. Are you there? Did she completely? Oh, there you are. She's there, but we cannot hear her. Let's give her a couple. And, and she's based in Washington. So now you see that um, mm -hmm. uh, technology issues are not only taking place uh, in um, uh, our original countries. It also happens here in the US. I think that she's on mute. She needs now, to unmute herself. Yeah. Thank you, Albertina. Concha, you have to unmute yourself. Can you hear us? Now I think that she left the meeting. Well, while she comes back, mm -hmm. let me again um, talk a little bit about um, uh, why uh, measuring fiscal transparency is so important uh, for us at, at the network. I was mentioning uh, that um, uh, one of the incentives to put together the network was to have a better uh, collaboration and complementarity between the different tools which uh, allow us now to say that uh, they really um, complement each other while IBP's effort focuses on uh, the budget cycle from accessibility to information, one, public participation, and three, uh, external control. Uh, tools such as PIFA uh, engage much more into the uh, strength of the PFM system and as we were saying IMF uh, brings a much uh, broader comprehensive approach uh, that includes uh, risks. So that's uh, one consideration. The other for, for the network is that um, the tools uh, are very good incentives for governments to join you might be surprised, but some governments say, I would like to join the network so I can be much more aware of these tools and I could learn from others and improve my scores. So that is happening and I hope that uh, uh, Georgia and Liberia will make that case. While, while we wait uh, uh, for um, uh, Concha to come back, let me ask if we could uh, hear Georgia <laughs> Ministry of Finance. Now, are you there? Natya? Hey, Katerina will be presenting. I think we have Eka here as well. Okay, Ekaterine. Yeah. Hi, Eka. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, how are you? We're fine. The floor is so yours. Should I start we'll, my we'll, presentation? Yes, let's, let's hear, let's listen to you. And, 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 and do it with all the time. And whenever uh, Conch is back, we'll, we'll go back to her. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Juan Pablo. Uh, so you can see my screen, I guess. Yes, we can. Hello? Yes, go ahead. We can see your screen. Okay. And we hear you very well. Yeah, so I was expecting that uh, the first presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you again for uh, allowing us to join your organization uh, as the new member. And let me present the Georgia's experience with the fiscal transparency evaluation. So I was expecting that the representative from the IMF would be um, 
explaining the fiscal transparency code and the, um, how they do the evaluations, but most probably the audience knows about this tool and instrument. Uh, so on the screen, you now see the results of our first fiscal transparency evaluation summary table uh, for all those three pillars the fiscal transparency uh, code has. Uh, Georgia has been, uh, uh, has been uh, had used to do PIFA assessments before. Uh, we were quite active in communicating uh, our uh, public finance management reform and assessing them uh, in regards to other international instruments. Uh, but the, the fiscal transparency evaluation we did in uh, 2016 was the first one, uh, actually the IMF did for us and it was published in 2017. Uh, so based on the um, results of the evaluation out of the 36 indicators overall, we scored advanced or good practices in 18 indicators, the dark green and the green ones. Uh, in 10 indicators, we had basic practice in place and we had quite a few uh, um, items where we, we uh, didn't qualify for the basic standards as well and uh, uh, needed a plan to uh, act forward. Uh, based, uh, the tool was very helpful for us because it made us uh, summarize all the progress we've made but, and it also showed us all the challenges we had in, uh, in place. Uh, Georgia already had the public finance management reform agenda in place. We started doing the current uh, stage of the reforms back in 2004. Uh, but the fiscal transparency code uh, results were very uh, helpful to summarize the achievements and uh, go ahead with the plan uh, for the future. Uh, as you see on this slide, we had quite a good practices in uh, fiscal reporting uh, in regards to timeliness and frequency and quality of our in year budget reporting, the budget specification, uh, we used GFSM uh, 2001 back then, now we already used GFSM 2014, was also a good practice. Uh, we had quite good statistical integrity, but we still had issues with the, the coverage of some of our institutions uh, uh, flows what we call the own resources of our legal entities or public law. We, uh, we had some challenges with the um, uh, consolidation and reconciliation of different kinds of reporting produced by different entities of the Ministry of Finance or the government. We had issues with uh, disclosing tax expenditure. Uh, so these were the challenges in uh, the first pillar, which is fiscal reporting. The second pillar, fiscal forecasting and budgeting, uh, the evaluation showed us our progress in uh, having our medium term forecasting in macro and fiscal parameters. Uh, the way we present our program based information and uh, information about our investment projects, uh, timeline of our budget documentation uh, was also shown as a good practice. Uh, and uh, the role of our parliament, parliament budget office and the external audit, the independent evaluation which is in place in, uh, during our budget process was also scored as good or advanced uh, practice. Uh, but again, we had some issues while disclosing our reports in, um, in regards to fiscal, fiscal performance uh, and our forecast reconciliation. Uh, fiscal risk is, I guess, the pillar which is the most difficult one all over the world. Uh, but we also had uh, some good practices in the fiscal risks pillar as well, because we were already producing our first fiscal risk uh, reports. We were doing uh, our um, basic, optimistic and pessimistic macro fiscal scenarios. We used to have debt sustainability analysis in place and some part of our contingent liabilities was also um, part of our fiscal reporting, but it was not comprehensive and did not cover all the uh, items. Uh, so the challenges uh, showed um, in the report were the um, we in regards to the quasi-fiscal operations of our state-owned enterprises uh, to be present in our fiscal reports, uh, to do more longer-term fiscal sustainability analysis, 
to disclose more the operations of our local governments. And also, we, by that time, we did not yet have the framework and the special law regulating public-private partnerships. Um, and our SOE management system uh, also was not uh, formally very well regulated and needed a lot of job to be done. So this assessment um, helped us to summarize all our challenges, as I already said. said uh, we received the recommendations from the International Monetary Fund on um, how to improve on those which we are uh, scored as uh, basic or non-existent practices. And we elaborated together with the IMF uh, the action plan uh, for 2017-2020. This action plan was part of the fiscal uh, transparency evaluation report and it was disclosed uh, um, on the website of the IMF as well as the Ministry of Finance uh, of Georgia website. Uh, uh, and so we followed since then this action plan uh, to improve our, um, uh, our performance in regards to fiscal transparency. Uh, in, in, on the slide, you can see uh, the green tick next to an action, which means that we've already done that action because we are already on the final year of our action plan. And uh, we, we have the uh, three green dots. It seems uh, it means that we are still in progress and we are finalizing the uh, action um, as it is our last uh, year of this uh, action plan. Um, so, in regards to the um, coverage of our institutions and uh, flows, um, we had a major update and all the flows of our legal entities or public laws. These are organizations which are allowed to also produce their own resources, now are part of our fiscal reporting. They go to the um, budget package submitted to the parliament. They are part of our quarter and annual reports. Uh, so, they are all covered uh, from now on. Uh, then, um, in regards to the um, general government financial statement, uh, we, uh, we are uh, implementing the reform of uh, moving to the IPSA standards and uh, uh, next year we'll be having uh, the, our first uh, consolidated IPSA-based financial statement for 2020. So this item is uh, still in progress. Uh, then we already um, ensured uh, the best uh, to use the best practice of our classi uh, of GFSM classification uh, in regards to uh, accounting for prior period invoices. Um, we already, uh, the, though uh, on the SOEs and PPPs, uh, the reform is still ongoing. We already have a law in place. Um, which regulates public-private partnerships and um, they are already part of our fiscal risk statement submitted to the parliament together with the annual budget package. Um, we've already uh, started, uh, prolonged our uh, debt sustainability uh, analysis and uh, started uh, reconciling the uh, information uh, produced by the Treasury and by the Ministry of uh, Budget Department of the Ministry of Finance on um, our um, on our different fiscal uh, reporting. Um, as for the auditing, the consolidated uh, financial statement, this is still ongoing because first we need to produce our first consolidated Ipsos-based financial statement and then the audit is also preparing for uh, doing its first audit uh, on this regard. Uh, and uh, also we have a, a reform in place on accounting for tax expenditure and our revenue service and our tax policy department wor works very actively with the International Monetary Fund as well to finalize this uh, action under the action plan. Um, we've covered, um, we've uh, amended our fiscal uh, rule law uh, and uh, this was also done uh, in cooperation with the uh, IMF and uh, we already um, report uh, against our fiscal uh, limits in our quarter and annual reports as well as uh, it is of course part of our annual budget package submitted to the parliament. Um, uh, so uh, this item is also 
tick tests are completed. Um, and more we more are, if you sorry? Please. One more minute, if you please. Yes, I, I'm almost there. Uh, yeah. Uh, so um, actually, um, this this covers uh, the action plan, which could be very uh, specific uh, for this presentation. But it just shows that uh, this is what we uh, had in mind uh, based on the uh, results of the evaluation done by the IMF as a fiscal transparency code. Um, suggests and uh, that we follow the action plan and that we actually succeeded. And if we do the next um, public uh, fiscal transparency evaluation, we really hope that there will be more green, uh, green, uh, how to say, dots uh, on that summary table. Uh, and also, there was a very recent. Um, technical uh, report from the IMF, uh, they supported the Ministry of Finance of Georgia in uh, assessing the public sector balance sheet and the state-owned enterprise management system. This is very recent document. It was published only last month, July uh, 2020. And uh, it is kind of a continuation of the uh, um, uh, third pillar of the fiscal transparency code, I could say. Uh, and so it makes more specific uh, action plan in place in regards to our state-owned enterprise system management. Uh, so that's, that's all about Georgia case, uh, how the fiscal transparency code and the IMF technical support team uh, helps us in defining our action plan uh, within our framework of public finance management reform. Um, so I tried to be brief. Thank you. Uh, and bravo, uh, it is uh, oh. an incredibly well planned structure uh, and uh, a persistent effort that actually takes a, an army because it, it, it engages all government and, and you would be surprised, but sometimes all of this is being made by very few people. So, so congratulations. Concha is back mm -hmm. and I believe uh, uh, that uh, while we put um, uh, uh, her, her presentation back very quickly, Concha, you, you, I'm going to give you three more minutes to finish your presentation. Uh, uh, we have uh, Carolina Renteria, your colleague from the IMF, who would like to uh, uh, provide a brief comment uh, on, on Georgia's presentation. Carolina, bienvenida. Is it me or...? Or Concha? You, Carolina. Well, in okay. the meantime, we will put Concha's presentation. Okay, Bye. thank you very much. So, yes, so, let me. We have an echo with you. Yeah, maybe now. First. Sorry. Now it's clear. Now it's I fine. Suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So, we so can hear you. I mean, congratulate Georgia. Uh, I, Georgia has been a great uh, partner for us in our capacity development efforts to strengthen fiscal transparency, and we we can we can very strongly say that Georgia has been fully committed to this agenda, and it's an excellent example of a country that takes seriously the the need to improve fiscal transparency, and that it's. Willing to go into uh, an evaluation such as the fiscal transparency evaluation, work with the team in in creating the the action plan that it has a time frame that it's realistic and at the same time ambitious. And I want to stress this because many times when we work with governments, we come with reform plans that are either too ambitious and not very realistic, or because we want to be realistic, then we are not ambitious. And I think in this FT, there was a perfect combination of ambition and, and, real, and realism. Uh, the government is clearly in the driving seat and wants to implement the reforms, but they have also consistently come back to us for support on implementing the reforms. So that's why I consider this a great partnership. 
and in that sense, we have uh, supported the government in, in some of the areas that were identified in the fiscal transparency evaluation, especially on the fiscal risk part. And we have worked with them on strengthening SOEs, PPPs, power purchase agreements, all these areas that uh, create fiscal risk and that it's important to have a framework to identify, analyze, and manage the fiscal risks. We have also helped them in improving the classification and sectorization of GFSM 20, with GM, GFSM 2014 and upgraded the whole fiscal risk framework. Georgia wanted to strengthen more the area and that's when they requested the balance sheet um, mission, which was a, also an excellent mission. That's recent, that happened, I would say, 10 months ago or so. Uh, and the reform plan that the, that uh, 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 diagnostic has follows the same methodology. It's ambitious, it's realistic, and it will keep the government very busy. Uh, and I think the, the last thing I just want to say, so we have also supported Georgia on, with a PIMA, Public Investment Management Assessment, and, and uh, other areas, but basically, I, so not only I can testify to the reform process, but also, I mean, Georgia went from position 34 in 2006 with minimal transparency to a 82, position of class A rating, to 82, 82 ex extensive transparency in 2017. So I think it's an excellent example, and I'm really glad many people are from other countries are hearing this example because it is a very good one. Thank you. Thank you. And we're so proud. Thank you, Carolina. And we're so proud that um, they just uh, become, um, they just became a part of the network and that there is so much to learn uh, from, from you and uh, so much to be inspired. Let me now, if you allow me, uh, go back to... On, on behalf of Georgian government, please let me again thank the IMF and all its technical missions coming to Georgia for the excellent support to our reforms. Thank you. Of course. Concha, are you with us? Yes, I am. Okay, please resume in three minutes. If you could basically more than start uh, over or, or just basically summarize uh, the, the main points of your presentation, I would be grateful uh, thinking about time. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. So uh, when, uh, uh, thank you for your passions with uh, technology. Uh, I started my, my presentation explaining what is fiscal transparency, why is it important to fight corruption, and then I introduced the tools that are relevant um, to, to, to identify governance vulnerabilities. And I introduced three important tools you have learned from the Georgia authorities and from my colleagues in the M1 division, what is a fiscal transparency evaluation. I described at the handbook. And the fourth important tool that we have at the IMF is what it's called the governance diagnostic uh, assessments, which started in 2018 after the board approved the enhanced frame, framework for governance, and uh, we have done more than 10 um, uh, governance diagnostic assessments. Some of them, five of them are already published. But I want to go to slide number five, which provides uh, a big picture of our results uh, of the fiscal transparency evaluations. We have taken so far 31, including Georgia, um, uh, you see that there are a wide range of countries that volunteer uh, uh, from advanced economies, emerging markets, and low-income countries, uh, mostly from Europe, but we have a representation of all the regions. I think there are some results that are important to comment. Uh, still, uh, most of the regions are in the um, basic uh, practices. Uh, um, in some areas, uh, for example, in the low-income countries, there are still more than a 20%, around 30% of the uh, practices that are not still met, and few uh, practices are in advanced um, 
advance. So uh, what is still it's a great concern for us on top of the fiscal reporting and the fiscal forecasting, as uh, I think Carolina also mentioned, is the fiscal, uh, fiscal risk analysis and management. Um, this is a part where still a lot of work needs to be done. Can we move to the slide number six? Uh, I want to show the relation it has. One minute, with, if you please. Yes, but the relation it has with the corruption. Here, what we do see is that our fiscal transparency evaluations scores, the total, has a very, very strong positive uh, correlation with the World Bank data on control of corruption. What does it mean? The countries who has the, 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 the higher score in fiscal transparency also tend to have a strong uh, rating in controlling corruption. But still, if we look at the, at the chart in the, in the left hand, we see that there are areas in most of the countries that still need a lot of work. I would say, especially in the areas of fiscal risk on public corporations, warranties, assets and liability management, still also in, in areas of the fiscal, the pillar two, public participation, in, fiscal, in pillar one, external audit, we still see that the quality of the fiscal reporting could be improving. We don't see that all the countries uh, present the, the, the appropriate supplementary budget. Uh, not uh, really that uh, investment projects are subject to open and competitive tender. Um, if we move to the uh, slide number seven, we will see very strong correlation with all the pillars uh, of the fiscal transparency with control of corruption, but especially on the pillar one, which is the fiscal uh, reporting. And um, improving this will help a lot on, the on understanding well the state of the public finances. Um, from, from a retrospective point of view, also from a prospective point of view, and also to understand that uh, uncertainties uh, can come from potential risk. To finalize, I wanted to uh, insist or note that we, in these governance reports that I mentioned um, and, and, and assess a number of area, we have seen uh, serious, very serious concerns related to fiscal transparency. There are five reports that are already published, but you could see in the report for Guinea-Bissau, uh, for Mozambique and for Zimbabwe, which is the one that is not published, but it has a summary in um, the staff report for 2020, that there are very serious concerns and vulnerabilities on many areas of fiscal transparency that could lead to high levels of corruption. Uh, I just want to finalize with the last um, uh, slide. Uh, you have the links to the fiscal transparency webpage thank and the you. fiscal transparency handbook. And thank you very much. I think I make my point that uh, fiscal you transparency did. is highly related to control of corruption. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And now we're going to see the civil society approach, methodology, rigor and perspective. The floor is yours, uh, colleagues Anjali and David. Great, thank you, thank you, Juan Pablo. Hopefully, everyone can see uh, can see my screen. Uh, it's great to join everyone uh, today. Uh, yeah. We're excited to share the results of the latest Open Budget Survey. Uh, my name is David Robbins. I'm a program officer with the International Budget Partnership and part of the team that puts together the OBS. Um, and so just a quick note, there's obviously a lot of detail on uh, the methodology or findings of the survey that I'm just not going to have time to, uh, to dive into today on the presentation. But of course, I'm happy to, uh, to answer any questions that might come up. So the Open Budget Survey, as you may know, is an international comparative measure of budget transparency, public participation, and oversight conducted from the citizen's point of view. So specifically, at the national level, we look at the transparency of key budget documents, including their public availability and the comprehensiveness of the information that they contain. 
We look at the opportunities for public engagement on the budget when key decisions are being made by the executive legislature and supreme audit institutions. And we look at the formal budget oversight practices by legislatures and SAIs. Um, I know there will be a session later this week that focuses on public participation. Uh, so most of my remarks today are going to be focused on the budget transparency results, um, but I will have a comment or two at the end on participation and oversight. Um, while the research for this latest OBS did occur prior to the pandemic, the findings provide valuable insights on the state of budget openness and accountability and can be used by governments and stakeholders to identify gaps and weaknesses as they respond to and recover from the crisis. Um, the open budget survey, as I mentioned, is from the citizen's point of view. So the research is conducted by civil society researchers in country. Um, it's a fact-based uh, assessment tool. So each indicator uh, ha will have an answer that is backed up by a citation that the researcher has provided. Um, and then there's a comprehensive review process that includes an independent uh, and anonymous peer reviewer. And every government is given the opportunity to comment on uh, the draft questionnaire, which is a practice that um, the, the vast majority of the 117 countries assessed in the most recent survey uh, took advantage of. So the latest open budget survey found that the global average for budget transparency to be the highest yet we've measured in the 15 years of this assessment. However, at only 45 out of 100, this tells us that we still have a long ways to go. Most countries still do not publish enough information. The average budget transparency score for gift members is 59 out of 100. This is just shy of the threshold for what we would consider to be sufficient budget information, which is a score of 61 or higher. To put it another way, countries that score 60 and below will have gaps in the budget information they make available, which restricts the public's ability to engage with our government and their budget. And as you can see from this slide, some gift members are among the highest performers out of the 117 countries examined in the survey. Uh, though there are a number of gift members that still provide insufficient budget information to their public. We believe that there's a real opportunity here for gift members to target a score of 61 or above, uh, solidifying themselves as leaders in this field. Globally, since 2008, we have seen a slow and steady progress towards greater budget transparency, with this latest round seeing an improvement of three points. This is a welcome return to progress following the first ever decline in the global average, which was noted in the last round. Improvements have been slow in part because as some countries make steady progress, regression on open budgeting practices and principles remains a significant problem. This is particularly evident by looking at regional average scores. So you can see here that Eastern Europe and Central Asia, East Asia and the Pacific, and Latin America and the Caribbean have seen steady and consistent progress and are on track to surpass a regional average score of 61 within the next decade. But South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the Middle East and North Africa have struggled with volatility, um, seeing some big improvements at times, but also some big drops. The average score for gift members improved by three points between the 2017 and 2019 surveys. The score of 60 members saw little to no change, while eight members scored moderately higher this round. Mongolia, Benin, and Croatia all saw double digit improvements. And gift members have made some of the most remarkable improvements on budget transparency. Georgia and Mexico have both gone from scoring below 61 to the top five of the rankings. Well, within the last two rounds of the survey, Guatemala, the Dominican Republic, Indonesia, Croatia, and Ukraine all reached or surpassed a transparency score of 61. 
So looking at the eight key budget documents that the survey assessed, we find some encouraging news. All GIF members make their executive's budget proposal, their enacted budget, and their year-end report available to the public in a timely and accessible way. However, there are still some gaps remaining in document publication for GIF members. One third of auto reports are not available to the public and just under half of the major reviews are not available. These are key pieces to the budget cycle that the public is missing out on. Globally, one out of three key budget documents that should be released are not made available. In addition, governments typically publish more information on budget plans than on budget execution, which is a problem that is compounded by gaps in oversight of budget execution provided by legislatures and supreme audit institutions, which I'll discuss in a minute. But steady progress is very possible. More than half of the budget documents the GIF members do not make available to their public are still produced. They're either produced for uh, internal use only or they're published, they're not published in a timely manner. Our experience has shown that these are the documents that are the low hanging fruit that can really drive big improvements in transparency. Three more minutes, David, if you please. Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, the Open Budget Survey examines not just budget transparency, but formal oversight and public participation. Um, and so I know we're looking just at transparency, but I just did want to make a couple points on oversight and participation. On oversight, we examine the roles and responsibilities of the legislatures and supreme audit institutions. The vast majority of GIF members have SAIs that provide weak oversight. However, more than half of these countries have inadequate legislative oversight. This weakens the checks and balances in the system. The two institutions are supposed to complement each other's work. So when one side is weak, it drags the system down. On public participation, we examine the opportunities for the public to engage with the budget through different points of the cycle and with different institutions. And the indicators are aligned to GIF's principles of public participation in fiscal policies. GIF members on average score seven points higher than non-members on public participation, although with GIF members only having an average score of 19 out of 100, there's still a long way to go. And so my last slide, I just want to note that we found that participation mechanisms are generally less common during budget implementation than for, during formulation and approval. This is true both globally and for GIF members. But there's obviously great examples around the world um, with GIF members leading the way, uh, such as Mexico or Georgia. Um, so I'm gonna stop here knowing you're gonna spend more time on pub public participation. Um, thanks again for the opportunity to join and discuss the results. And we're looking forward to the rest of the discussion and any questions, thank you. Thank you so much, David. It, it was fantastic to see uh, the way you covered gift countries in, in, in your presentation. Angeli, David, really great, a lot to talk about. But unfortunately, uh, we have to leave at 10 a.m. sharp because we have a consecutive session. We will have more chances to uh, address some of these questions uh, throughout the week. Some um, uh, participants have raised some questions in the chat. Uh, one of them in Spanish, but I know that Carolina and Concha can perfectly respond to that question in Spanish. If you please can address these questions in the chat. There is another one for you, OBI team in English. Now, uh, let me uh, ask uh, to um, Vice Minister, Honorable uh, Vice Minister Bronson from Liberia to take the floor. Your country has been mentioned. Uh, it is an exemplar, exemplary uh, case of uh, systematization as on effort. So please, uh, Vice Minister Bronson, the floor is yours. Thank you, Juan. Uh, good afternoon to my colleagues. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a presentation prepared, so I'm just going to speak to several issues. Um, Please do. Well, Liberia, 
historically Liberia has been behind this performance of fiscal transparency and access to public information. But in 2008, Liberia scored three on the biannual open budget survey. In 2010, the score jumped to 40. That was because of several publications, including year-end reports, media review, the audit report, and the strengthening of the General Auditing Commission, as well as the establishment of the Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission. In 2011, the government committed to the Open Budget Partnership, and in 2013, the National Open Budget Initiative was launched, which enabled public, including civil society and the media, as well as friends of Liberia to have easy access to government financial information. As part of these initiatives to enhance fiscal transparency, the government produced its first citizen's guide to the budget and the mid-year national budget performance report and disseminated them to the 15 counties of Liberia. We also enhanced and continue to produce and publish eight budget documents, including the pre-budget statement, um, the draft budget proposals and active budgets, citizens guide to the national budget, in-year reporting, mid-year reviews, year-end financial statements, and audit reports. Um, in 2019, on the, open, on the OBS index, our score improved to 38. It went from 36 to 38 percent. In 2020, we renewed our relationship with GIFT, through which we were opportune with support of a consultant through the Fiscal Openness Accelerator process, Project. Mm -hmm. They provided support for the preparation of our 2020 draft national budget to ensure that key pieces of information and documents with, were produced within a short frame, time frame in detail and in, in a format as required in the preface. We improved the comprehensive of, of our budget documents, especially the budget preface and the annexes. Also, the executive budget proposal, along with the pre-budget statement, the budget framework paper, um, and the revenue book have been submitted, and they are published on our website at www.mfdp.gov.lr. For the first time, we have we produced a fact sheet of the draft budget which is being used for our ongoing engagement with citizens in order to gather feedback for the legislative consideration prior to the passage of the national budget for FY 2020-21. We are working in close collaboration with the civil society actors in these initiatives. We have also reviewed and drafted the terms of reference for the Liberia Fiscal Transparency Advisory Group. Formal adoption is pending meeting of stakeholders and other members. Um, there are considerations for, public part for a public participation mechanisms for Liberia, and that is ongoing and scheduled to be finalized at the end of this month. Challenges. I think our major challenges have been the timing in terms of the start of the budget preparation. For the past two or three years, we have been late in starting that process. Traditionally, that starts in September of the pre previous year, but we have been starting it after January of the year. So the time frame for engagements has been very limited, and that has had impact in terms of some of the initiat initiatives that we should have done. Also, the limited fiscal space for undertaking adequate awareness for public and training of civil society organizations in public financial management and analysis. Our ongoing initiatives include um, 
the development of a citizen's budget portal that is currently under construction with our um, IT professionals here at the ministry. Our plan is also to expand the open budget initiative by not only maintaining the production levels of the citizen's guide, but also coverage to all 15 counties, including districts within those counties. Um, and also to enhance and include summary of the GAC reports of GOL consolidated accounts, our county development funds, we are, which are funds that are appropriated to various um, counties within the country, including coverage to remote di districts, etc. cetera. Um, then also we have social development funds which are provided by concessions. We need to include reports in terms of outcome of those uh, development funds and also the disbursements of donor funding and reporting on our SOE. We hope to improve that um, in our initiatives next year. We are still growing and we are still working on enhancing our performance and we hope that as a result of the, the, the intervention this year, our scores will be better during the, um, the survey. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Minister of the Budget of Liberia, Honorable Mrs. Bronson. Thank you. Uh, we were just talking about uh, best performance. Um, and your case, is one of the best efforts with a very clear objectives, very strong uh, perseveration, and uh, with openness to uh, learn from others and to share your experience. So we appreciate very much um, you being part of uh, uh, the network and us uh, being able to learn from your experience. Uh, as, as said, dear colleagues, uh, we have to leave in three minutes because uh, we have a consecutive session to which you are invited to with the OGP uh, colleagues, the OGP Open Government Partnership uh, um, uh, community. Uh, but since we still have three minutes, let me ask um, uh, our presenters uh, to take uh, one minute for the last remarks or if, if they would like to have any uh, last comment, please do now. Uh, could we start with you, Concha? Or whoever, Anjali, David, our friends from Tbilisi, Natia, Ekaterine, feel free. Uh, here is Concha. Por favor. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think there is a consistent message uh, among the presentations no, on the, the way forward you know, and the way countries they need to, to improve fiscal transparency. And I think at certain point, country can, cannot be compared, but they have a common uh, road ahead you know, on improving, especially the areas of fiscal reporting and uh, fiscal risks. Thank you. Thank you. Anjali? Thank you, Juan Pablo. Uh, first, let me thank you again for allowing us the opportunity to participate in, in today's meeting. We um, found all of the presentations and, and questions to be very um, insightful. I think I'd just like to um, reiterate Concha's message in that um, I think all of the presentations and, and tools that were shared today um, highlight uh, a, a clear sort of roadmap um, to improving fiscal transparency. And I know much work has been done in recent years to harmonize these tools um, under GIFT's uh, leadership and so that countries interested in improving practices, particularly in, in the current environment when fiscal transparency is of the utmost um, importance, can look to um, institutions like IMF and the IVP and, and GIFT as, as partners who will collaborate together to um, support government's efforts to improve transparency and, and participation. So thank you again for the opportunity to join today. Thank you. And thank you all for your presence. Uh, thank you for sharing your experience. Uh, 
and for uh, listening and be willing to uh, question, uh, but also to learn. Let's see you now in our next session on uh, the importance of co-creation and collaboration, civil society and governments to face the pandemic. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.